What's the worst party you've ever attended? Story 1. I was invited to a sleepover in high school. The girl was a bit bratty, but she lived in this huge lakefront house and everyone wanted to go because they wanted to sleep in her mom's mansion. This sleepover party turns into a rich kid brag fest. She wouldn't let any of us touch anything she owned because it was hers. She showed off her birthday present, a tanning bed. Someone mentioned that we should watch a movie. We all agreed to watch something, but she put her foot down and said we were watching a musical she wanted to watch, or we could go home. Her mom ordered pizzas for us and had bought wine coolers. We were all in the 14 to 16 age range. The girl dictated that we were to only have two pieces each because she didn't want fat friends. Some of the girls were bored with the movie, so we decided to do manicures instead. The girl came unglued. How dare we interrupt movie time? She ran upstairs and tattled to her mom, who then told us we had to put that stuff away and watch the movie because we were being disruptive. We played truth or dare afterwards, and we dared this girl to eat a third slice of pizza as a joke. She got so angry that she started crying, stomped off to her room, and locked the door. She didn't come out for the rest of the night, but we heard her screaming and throwing things. The mom came downstairs and unlocked her door, trying to calm her down. The rest of us kind of sat around, shocked at her behavior, and a few of us called our parents, asking for them to come pick us up, myself included. I don't think the girl ever recovered from this mishap. She eventually went on to be a hard drug user in her late teens, fried her brains out, and now she lives in this one-bedroom shack on the outer part of town and can barely string a sentence together. Story 2 So this was last summer. A buddy of mine invited me and a few other mutual friends to a party he was hosting. My crew drove in together and arrived about 10 minutes after the start time. We show up and the host isn't there, just his high roommate. He lets us into the dining room, living room space of the apartment, where there's a kitchen table and four random chairs. Rest of the room is empty, except for a bookshelf. We definitely were a little turned off already, but hey, it'll be a party and there's booze, so no biggie. The roommate said our friend was out getting wine, so we sort of awkwardly sat around the table in silence. Eventually, maybe 25 minutes later, the host shows up and offers us drinks. Except one thing, there's only six or seven glasses or mugs that are clean. So we sort of huddle in the kitchen to get some cups and then go back into the empty room to awkwardly socialize. Slowly, more people start showing up, maybe 20 people plus ourselves. Eventually, maybe an hour and a half in, finally someone puts on some music. But it's mainly just a bunch of awkward college kids sitting on a wooden floor. Never sure how the rest of them drank. Maybe someone went out to buy plastic cups. Anyway, at one point we realize the host and a few of his bros disappeared, and when they finally show up again, we learn that they went across the street to grab pizza slices for themselves. At that point, I was pretty done with it all and rounded up the crew to leave, but wow, I never will understand why he chose to host that party. Story 3. The party itself wasn't bad, and I certainly wouldn't say it's the worst party I've ever attended, but this one sticks out in my mind for a painfully obvious reason. My girlfriend and her roommates had a party earlier this year to celebrate the beginning of the new semester. It was a small gathering, 10 to 12 people tops, and I ended up playing shot glass checkers with another friend and got way too drunk very early in the night. I'm both a lightweight and, as I quickly found out, very bad at checkers. I actually ended up laying down in my girlfriend's room for a little while, just to give you an idea of how drunk I got. Anyway, about halfway into the party, I finally start feeling a little less nauseous, and I'm once again having a good time. Out of the blue, I got a call from my mother. No big deal. I figured she wanted to just say goodnight. Nope. My dog passed away. Apparently, her health had deteriorated rapidly in the weeks since I'd left home, and she had to be put down. My mom wanted to tell me over the phone before my siblings had the chance to post anything about it on Facebook. In hindsight, I recognize why she did this, and I obviously preferred finding out this way. But it pretty much ruined the rest of the night, and I can't help but feel I was a total buzzkill for everyone else. My drunk butt spent another good portion of the party in my girlfriend's bedroom, trying to pull myself together. On the plus side, my girlfriend is the sweetest person in the world, and spent a long time with me that night trying to help me through it while balancing her duties as a hostess. Really lucky she was there. Story 4 Went to a new co-worker's house party where she ordered food and drinks only for herself and her friends, telling everyone else there was nothing in the house to eat. We later found out that the cupboards had been filled with snacks that very evening, but the host didn't think the guests should be allowed to have any. 
Not just that, she took another coworker home early from work to buy these snacks from the grocery store, even asking her to contribute to the cost. But once the party started, there was no mention of any of that food. Most people at the party didn't know each other really well, yet we were made to play some random card game where you get points based on knowing each other's deepest fears and ambitions. It got awkward pretty fast. A few hours into this, a giant pizza arrived, and one coworker picked up a slice. She was told, um, that's for us, host and her friends, leaving the rest of the party to order food for themselves. I should add here that she spent the whole week urging people to attend this party, giving up their Friday night to be at her place freaking horrible to say the least. The host even suggested that if guests wanted to drink her alcohol, they could contribute per drink consumed from her bottles, even though no one was told we had to bring our own alcohol. Where I'm from, you either let your guests know they BYOB, or it's understood that they're allowed to drink and eat from bottles and plates of food you've placed in front of them for frick's sake. Story 5 I was invited to a co-worker's 23rd birthday party via Facebook, which had a good amount of people who said yes to the invite. I showed up about 20 minutes late after texting the birthday girl that I was on my way. Arrive at the house and see there are four people there, and they are all incredibly drunk. I crack open a beer that I brought and start talking to the people who are actually there. The birthday girl disappears outside for a little while with a friend, and then comes inside and asks me to head outside with her. I've been at the party for less than 30 minutes at this point. We sit outside her house as she's hiccuping and laughing. She tells me that I need to leave because they're all pretty drunk and aren't planning on going out like they had previously planned. She tells me that I can't go back inside and that I should just head home right now. I asked if I could finish my beer and she said I had to do it outside. Luckily, no one had offered a place to put my stuff down when I arrived and I had everything with me so I chugged my beer as fast as possible and left. Haven't talked to her since. Story 6. In college, I went to a singles mixer organized by an RA. I knew it wouldn't be a drinking party, but I assumed it would be sort of like a cocktail reception, where I could meet some single woman. The RA who organized it was in a counseling program and decided the best format was to sit everyone in a group, like a group therapy setting. She then asked everyone to go around the room and talk about who they are, then what they're looking for, then relationship preference, and so on, and on and on. It was long and weird, and really personal for a group setting. At the end, you would assume that she would use the speed dating format, where we could discreetly write a few names we liked, and if there's a match, they would connect us. Nope. We were asked to go around the room and, in a safe and open setting, tell us someone you felt a connection with, and we could be paired up. The RA went first. She picked the hottest guy in the room. He said, uh, sorry, I'm more interested in someone else. And that ended the entire evening on the spot. Story 7. A wedding reception and dinner, which was, for some reason, overbooked. Though there was plenty of food, there literally were not enough places to sit, and no assigned seating. The worst part of it was there would have been plenty of seats if only people had agreed to eat in shifts. But the people who arrived first saved seats for their friends. We tried sitting in several places, but each time someone spoke up and said, sorry, that seat's saved. At any given time, half the seats were empty because the people who had claimed them were off talking to someone at another table. After going through the buffet line, my wife and I had to go outside and sit on the concrete steps while we ate and while mosquitoes ate us alive. We left as soon as we were done eating, and my wife is a musician who played during the wedding. She had refused payment because she was a friend of the bride. At the end of the wedding, we had to pack up her sound equipment, which is why we were among the last to arrive at the reception. Story 8. I've attended some pretty bad ones, but here's some highlights from a few. Husband's Christmas work party. CEO's wife got super drunk and took the mic away from him while he was making the usual rah-rah hooray for the company speech. She slurred a bunch of nonsense at us and then terrified the crap out of a month-old baby by trying to do baby talk into the mic while hammered. New Year's party, X got stupid drunk and was being really obnoxious. A mutual friend of ours, there with his girlfriend, put his hand on my shoulder and said, you could do so much better. Also, X's drunken best friend put Harvest Moon by Neil Young on repeat for over an hour while pontificating about sports. I spent the night cleaning up vomit and putting drunks to bed in the recovery position. My Christmas work party, vice president made out with a barely legal young woman from filing, while his wife waited at their table, 
Coworker barfed on our manager's shoes copiously. Guy took a picture of his dong with a coworker's phone while she was socializing and dancing. Bunch of bathroom stall hookups. Story 9. Probably will be buried, but here goes. Became friendly with a bunch of French people while living in a non-European city. They all seemed like nice, intelligent folks. One day, one of them invited me to his birthday party. When I got there, the host immediately laughed at the bottle of whiskey I'd brought as a present, Jameson's, and offered to pour me some good whiskey. I kind of laughed it off, but then things got worse. Everyone was speaking French, and they refused to speak to me. I went from group to group, trying to make conversation. People would politely ask me in English and keep speaking French. It was like a nightmare. They all knew I wasn't a French speaker. Why did they invite me? Finally, I went out on the balcony to smoke a cigarette and regroup. This dude comes out and starts speaking to me in French. Even I could tell his French was horrible, and he was not a native speaker. I start yelling at him to speak to me in English, and he runs off. I downed my drink and left. In France, parties are called la boom. Story 10. A girl I was dating at the time and I went to a large off-campus party, mostly of people we barely knew. It was a mixed group of straight and gay, mostly music majors and drama, performing arts students, along with a variety of others. As the party progressed, we noticed that people kept disappearing without saying goodbye, so that the main room had fewer and fewer in it. At one point when the music stopped, we noticed noise coming from down the long bedroom hallway as we made our way to the bathroom. When the master bedroom door opened, the dimly lit room was filled with people from the party having a private orgy on the bed, on the floor, standing up, or on chairs. It was hard to tell who was doing what, and with whom, just sort of a free-for-all. We didn't get roped into it, but we left. Tried to find the host, but he wasn't in the main room or the kitchen. If an orgy was part of his plan, he never mentioned it. Story 11. In college, some high school classmates of mine sent me an invite to a party they were throwing a few streets from the house I was living in. My buddy from back home made the trip to the town where I go to school. We went to another party where he got blackout drunk, decided to leave and head over to the original party. We get there and it is literally over. Only a few people showed up and they left pretty early. We are leaving and a drunk friend bumps into two guys walking down the street. Turns out we were right in front of their frat house. Drunk friend proceeds to talk, and I beg them to let me just take him home because he's really drunk. Before I can finish my sentence, a drunk friend punches the guy on the sidewalk, and he starts getting his butt kicked. Guys are pouring out of this frat house. I tried to pull the dude off of my buddy and ended up getting my butt kicked too. I was angry at him for a while over that one. Now Flats is going to kick my butt. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 12. When I was in high school one spring break, a guy who I was, I'd say, sort of friends with, friendly in school but never hung out one-on-one, -on -one, told me he was having a party and named all the hot chicks from our school who'd be there. Frankly, I was a little surprised to be thought of or included. I went to his house and not one other person turned up. He was a popular kid, arguably more popular than me. That wasn't so bad, but the slightly eerie part was he never mentioned the party again, perhaps out of embarrassment, which is understandable, but couldn't help but kind of wonder if he'd end my life or something, like some animal who'd fallen into a trap. Nope, we got high and watched Biloxi Blues. Not a terrible night, but I'd say the worst party I've ever been to, in that there was none. Also, he shot a blowgun dart at me that went into the wall above my head. Story 13. I shared office space with an accounting firm, and the accounting firm invited me over to their holiday party one year. I end up sitting kind of near two of the accountant's wives and overhear their conversation. It essentially was how one of them was complaining about something her young son was doing, totally normal complaining by a parent, and then the other wife says, Oh, that's nothing. We have to take a little Timmy to see a psychiatrist, because he was afraid to eat soup. I thought I misheard her, and she said it again like three more times. So Monday, when I get back to the office, I'm talking to one of the other accountants who was complaining about how boring the party was, and I mention the soup story. He instantly says, Oh yeah, totally true. That kid is so messed up because of his parents. Being afraid of soup is a special level of crazy that only parents can cause. Story 14 Last New Year's, my work friend brought me and my brother to a party in someone's home. 
For some reason, their home only consisted of one couch, a long nightstand, one of those old antenna TVs, a table, a sink, no toilet, they had made sangria and used the sink to hold it, and a window that led to part of the roof. The only people there were three girls playing beer pong on the nightstand, and two men, large black twins both wearing striped shirts sitting on either side of the couch. Those two reminded me of Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Ended up being pretty friendly, though. When the ball was about to drop, the TV conked out. I got so drunk off the sink sangria that I ended up out that window on the roof, throwing up into the street below. My brother and I left ten minutes after the ball dropped and never talked about it again. Story 15. Senior year college house party. It started off okay. A good-sized crowd, a few drinks... Takeaway pizzas galore, and everyone playing this board game called Articulate. By the next morning, two of the hosts who had started the night as a couple were now in a, shall we say, gaping open relationship. One of the bathrooms had been redecorated in vomit, including ceiling. Honestly, I was impressed. One guest had been outed to his Bible-bashing parents via Skype. Another stole a suitcase. A third managed to somehow fall out of the attic conversion, then back into the house, then down the main staircase, all while projectile vomiting. I don't even know how. But what really ruined it for me was someone stole my favorite pair of gloves. So I liberated a bottle of Jack Daniels that survived the evening as compensation. Story 16. An office Christmas party, not an officially sanctioned company event, but an informal gathering at a co-worker's house. No bosses were there. At some point, my wife looked at me and said, You're drunk. You need to get home. Now. I don't know what made her say that. I'm not an obnoxious drunk. I don't get into arguments with people or say outrageous things. I might have been slurring my words a little, but I wasn't on the point of falling down or throwing up. But I trusted her judgment, so I let her drive me home. I was drunk enough that I went straight to bed and fell sound asleep. So what did my wife do? She went back to the party without me and ended up making out with one of my coworkers. This was my first wife. Story 17. Birthday party for a friend of mine when me and him were both maybe five years old. In front of everyone, I was firmly pulled aside by the arm by the birthday boy's mother for busting the pinata too early. I was then told that I was ruining the party, that I almost hit the birthday boy's dad with the little wiffle bat that we were using, and that I should be better behaved or she would tell my parents. In my defense, I was blindfolded, and the piñata was being moved up and down, so it was all fair game. I was also never told that we were trying to make the piñata last. Also, how much damage can a five-year-old kid with a wiffle bat do to a grown man? Story 18. My own birthday party. It was during my high school years. I had invited about five friends over, which was all my friends. Everything was ready, snacks, games to play, and I'm waiting for my friends to show up. None of them do. Instead, my brother invites his friends over. It ended up pretty good. The snacks didn't get wasted, and at least somebody showed up. Edit. Seems you guys have misinterpreted my brother's actions. His friends didn't hang out with me at all. Still better than nobody, I guess. Story 19. A friend of ours recently threw a birthday party for their son turning one year old. I should have remembered the horror of being at a one-year-old's birthday party. There were babies everywhere. Young fathers looking dead-eyed and bored or lost. The worst part of it wasn't all that, though. I sort of like kids. The worst part was the constant, when are you guys going to have a baby? Or, you guys are next. Uh, excuse me, both of us are very content to have things like money in our lives right now. Stop hassling us every two minutes. Story 20. A World of Warcraft LAN party. I've been into video games since I was a kid and really enjoyed LAN parties. I thought they would be the same as StarCraft, AoE 2, or Counter-Strike parties, but boy was I wrong. The party that I attended was like a checklist of every single World of Warcraft stereotype, minus the Cartman pooping one. I felt so out of place and ended up playing a single player game most of the night because I didn't want to partake in the orgy of junk food and soda coupled with quests. Story 21. Work Christmas party. Fed some banquet spiced chicken. If you've ever been to any catered conference ever, you know what I'm talking about. Which wasn't cooked all the way through and nearly immediately made me ill which would have been fine if we weren't caught out watching a corporate video for 45 minutes. I was at the front, and there was a weird, you-probably-shouldn't-leave-right-now energy that I abided by. My stomach sounded like Bobby McFerrin singing underwater. Story 22. I was at a pool party. By nightfall, everyone was pretty wasted. 
One of the guests thought it would be funny to fill a Jägermeister bottle with Ipecac and offer shots to the people in the pool. Twelve or so people did the shots and were so wasted that they didn't care that it tasted funny. A few minutes later, it was a total puke fest. In the pool. Kind of like that scene from Family Guy, but in water, so everyone was screaming and scrambling to get out as the puke swirled around them. Story 23. I had a friend from high school invite me and three other friends over for what he described as a party. We thought that it might be a small gamer party with some nerdy board games or something, as there were only the three of us, plus him and his wife. His wife then proceeds to start an hour and a half presentation about Arbon and tries to sell female beauty products to a group of males between the ages of 19 and 22. I was astounded. Story 24. Haven't been to that many parties, but this one stood out for its weirdness. A couple was throwing a holiday party. I knew the husband, who was a computer tech worker. His wife was a fashion photographer. So basically half the people at the party were nerdy computer guys, and the other half were gorgeous women who worked as high fashion models. Let me tell you, the guys were very interested in mixing, and the women were not. Story 25. When I was seven, my mother hired a pony and a cart to come to my house for all the kids, and I got a really bad rash from the pony. And all the kids got to ride the pony, and I had to go inside. And my mother was rubbing cream on me for probably three hours, and I never came outside. And by the time I got out, the pony was already in the truck and around the corner. So that was my worst birthday ever. Story 26. My buddy's parents went away for a weekend, and we left one guy in charge of inviting chicks. Literally all he had to do was text everyone we normally invite to parties. He had the morning off, and he said he invited everyone, but no one showed up. Turns out the text never went through, and it was about 10 guys getting high. I was faced with playing beer pong. Story 27. A Mormon wedding reception, no alcohol, string quartet playing, no dancing, and four hours of listening to family members reminisce about the bride and her life leading up to this momentous occasion. The marriage lasted one year. Don't go to Mormon wedding receptions. Story 28. I went to a three-hour christening party for a baby whose mother my wife met at a baby group. We had nothing in common with them and had to sit through a Baptist ceremony that meant nothing to us with our three-month-old in attendance. He was bored and was happy to share his irritation by screaming. Story 29. My ex's holiday party. I thought there would be a chance we could get back together again, but after a brief five-minute conversation, she went to attend to other guests. I didn't know anyone else and ended up sitting by myself for an hour before leaving. These scenes from 500 Days of Summer kill me. Story 30. One of the many graduation parties I went to after high school. It was an awesome party for an hour or so. Then some 17-year-old showed up with her baby and kept insisting people keep it down so she could get the baby to sleep and have some time to herself and to party. Cleared out pretty fast. Story 31. Office Christmas party, law firm, at a fancy seafood restaurant. Midway through the appetizer, one of the manager partners stands up to give a toast. The partnership is dissolved. So we were all out of work, but told to please enjoy the meal. It is Christmas. No one is glum. Story 32. My dad planned a big Christmas party a few years ago, invited all of his friends from work and a bunch of other people, went out and spent about 250 bucks on food and booze. Not a single person showed up. At least I had lots of snacks to eat and booze to drink. I felt really bad for him, though. Story 33. Was pouring at a brew fest, got invited to a hotel party later that night by another brewery rep, and was supposed to be a great party with lots of breweries in attendance. Showed up, it was just that brewery rep making garlic bread and his drunk-as-heck, mostly naked girlfriend. Story 34. Child's birthday party. Parents swapped cute stories about their kids' bowel movements. Kids ran around screaming at each other. There was no alcohol, no adult food. To top it off, the hostess was into healthy foods, so the only snacks was a variety of raw fruit. Story 35. I was at an outdoor party with a big tower in the middle. One drunk guy made his way to the tower with some glass bottles and threw them into the masses. I wasn't hit by any bottle, but a friend of mine had to leave for the hospital. The guy on the tower was mental. Story 36. New Year's Eve party at my parents' house. Just as the clock struck midnight, my dad set off possibly the biggest firework I've ever seen and heard. The sound of it was so loud, in fact, that it killed my sister's hamster. A lot of screaming and crying followed. Story 37. 
One of my then-boyfriend's friends had a party. Everyone started drinking. Then they all started making out. He neglected to tell me it was some orgy thing. I called a cab. Story 38. Birthday party of an ex-coworker with all my ex-managers in attendance. P.S. I got fired for pointing out managerial inadequacies. Lol. Most awkward party ever. Story 39. Was a date to a female friend's cousin's wedding. The father of the bride passed away of a heart attack during the reception. A horrible, horrible night. Story 40. Got invited to a hotel party by some girl I liked in high school. Turned out just a bunch of high school kids smoking crack. What the heck? Story 41. Mandatory work Christmas party at a restaurant. We had to buy our own food. And then the very next day, they let a bunch of people go. Story 42. I was at a pretty fun party in high school, but then a gun was pulled. Instant crowd killer, although no one actually got shot or passed away. Story 43. I was invited to a toga party. Huge party, maybe 60 plus people in a bungalow style house. Not one girl showed up. Story 44. I have been at two parties where people got shot. Kind of ruins the vibe when this happens. Story 45. My 10th birthday, nobody came. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.